One good morning, Colin here, and wanted to do this video specifically because um, someone from our community, you know, sent me an email and said, "Hey, Colin, I noticed that with a lot of my trades, I'm getting my stop loss is getting hit most of the time. So how do I know where to set my stop loss?" So what's very important is for you all to look go back to the website and there's a section that says how to read charts right and in that i talk about support and resistance support and resistance are absolutely um the main way that you know where to place a trade and where to set your stop losses and your take profits okay let me give you a very simple illustration why so let's see so anytime you look at a chart now remember this the bigger the time frame that you're using then the bigger your stop loss has to be in other words one of the two of the main reasons that people don't make money in forex is one they trade with lot sizes that are too big for their account and two they set stop losses that are too tight. Everybody wants to catch something at the very, very top. Like this, you'd be like, oh yeah, I want to catch this trade at the very, very top. So I'm setting a stop loss like just right here. Um, and then what normally happens is the candle will go up a little bit, take you out of your stop loss, and then head down in the direction that you expected it to. But just note that if you're setting a stop loss on a daily chart, that needs to be pretty big in my opinion. I mean, it should be at least, I mean, you should be at least willing to set a stop loss that's at least 50. Um, I mean, just my opinion. I mean, that can go up to at least 50 pips away, to be honest, if it's on the daily chart. It's very different if you're trading on the 15 minute chart. Everything is a lot closer, right? So for example, now here's an example if I was getting into this trade. So because of this parabolic move, for one, I would not be looking in, to get into a trade right now. That, that's already missed. But I would look at something. Okay, let's look at support and resistance. We noticed that before, this area up here was resistance because it sent this pair shooting down a whole lot right after we hit this point so now we're on our way back up again i would expect us to go and retest this point 1.09259 right i would expect this to again be resistance because it was major resistance over here and we've only tested it once so normally we have to go and retest it again. Normally, right? Normally. Now, if I were to, let's say I were to set a sell order here because I was expecting that um, if it comes here, I expect some resistance. So I expect it to retrace a bit, right? 250, uh, let's say 250, 240. And let's say I expected it to, I was looking to, to get a, a quick couple of pips, right? 250 if I look left I realize the next area of support for this is actually right here at about 164 because if you just look at this activity right here you realize it was stuck here for a while before it broke through right it kept getting resisted 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 all right and um, see if I zoom in a little bit more so look at look at all that resistance at this point that tells us that this is a very significant area of resistance. So if we can break through it and close, actually close a candle above it, then it would act as support, okay? But this area is very significant. So if I wanted to do a sell order up here at 250, then I would be looking for it to come down here and possibly gain support now that we've broken through this area, which as you can see, if we're looking right, that's exactly what it's doing right now, right? Um, so it may break through, but I know that there's pretty much no resistance in between this area. So if I trade at, if I took my order at about 250, 
109,250. And I take my I would take my profit right above here. And because I'm trading on the 15 minute time frame, right? Movements are much quicker. Um, it seems much more volatile, really. Um, so if I'm taking a trade like that, then I may look to just take something in between here, 250, right? And 182, right? So what, maybe about seven pips or so. Once again, trading on the 15 minute time frame, right? Very small. But my main point that I want to make is support and resistance. So if I wanted to set a stop loss for this pair, then my stop loss would be above, above this point here. It would have to be above this because I can see that even though that was a wick, that is a potentially where it could go back to. So if I zoom back out and I move back over here, so let's just say I took a trade now. Let's say, you know, I was looking for a retracement. I mean, this is very parabolic. So that, you know, just a hint, that means this has got to come back down here. It's just unsustainable. At a minimum, it has to come back down here, right? However, getting into it at the right time, right? We're trying, we got to figure that out. But if I were to get into a sell order right now, because I was looking for it to go down, because of where I took this sell order, I have to look left and look for where the previous levels of resistance were. This is the highest level of resistance so far, just in this zone of trading, okay? So if I am getting into a trade right now, if I set my stop loss, you know, like right here, just because it's above where this section was, more than likely I'm going to get kicked out. I have a better chance of not getting kicked out of my stop loss if I set my stop loss above here, somewhere up here, because I'm even giving room that if it goes past this a little bit, I want to clearly be away from that, okay? So that's how you want to set your stop losses. Look left identify the area of support and resistance okay if you're selling you have to put your stop loss above the previous level of resistance if you're buying which means you expect it to go up right so let's say i took a buy order right here because i expected it to go up if i were to set a stop loss i would have to set my stop loss down here because this previous this previously was a strong level of support. So it's possible that it could go back down here again. So if I wanted to take a shot with putting in a buy order right here, I would be placing my stop loss somewhere down here, just you know below this area. If you set it within this area, more than likely it may come down a little bit, kick you out of your stop loss and then head right up. So I hope that that helps in teaching you how to identify where you should put your stop losses when you're trading. Remember the time frame that you're using, the bigger the time frame, it means usually, usually the bigger, um, uh, the, the more room you should give for your stop loss because there are bigger movements on the bigger time frames. Okay, guys, take care.